Well, for more on the outlook for Tesla, I'm joined by Carl Brower from California. Carl is executive publisher at Markets Insights firm Cox Automotive. Thank you for joining me. Hey, great to be on with you. So, quite the turnaround for Tesla. What do you talk this recent stock market valuation up to? You know, they've got a couple great stories to tell. Certainly, the, the numbers beat uh, on this latest earnings call was, was helpful. Also, now these rumblings that have turned from, to a uh, uh, confirmation from Tesla that the Model Y could be out earlier than expected, which is usually the, the opposite of what happens with Tesla. Usually, their models are delayed. And, uh, you know, the sales in China, the ramping of sales, the, the production capabilities in China, and now sales starting to ramp. Those three things are the good, good news. I think people are really fixated on those. Now, I know there's a couple bad, you know, there's a couple bad things, too, depending on how you want to look at it. We, we do feel like uh, there could be challenges in China for reasons that you just discussed and all related to the economy and, and now the coronavirus. There's also um, the fact that there are so many more cars coming as was reported. We've got 16 electric vehicles in the U.S., for instance, this year, and we're supposed to have 54 by 2022. So that's a lot more vehicles for uh, people to choose beyond the Tesla, Tesla vehicles. Uh, and also there's a sense that there might be a market saturation in the U.S. in that uh, the sales for 2019 were almost identical to 2018. So there wasn't really growth in this latest calendar year in the U.S. Again, globally, there should be a lot more opportunities, but right. Some of, the some of the global economies aren't great either right now. now. Now, in terms of valuation, we did see presidential candidate Ralph Nader weighing in. He had this criticism of Tesla. He said, deep in debt, selling less than 400,000 vehicles last year and challenged by several competing electric car models in 2020, Tesla's stock valuation stunningly exceeds VW, which sold over 10 million vehicles last year. Watch out. Tesla believers. So is that a fair assessment of Tesla and, and some of these valuation issues, or has the game changed since this isn't your run-of-the-mill traditional car company? I think that's why you're seeing the numbers you're seeing, obviously. You cannot apply traditional automaker numbers to Tesla because it is doing so many things that other automakers aren't doing, whether it's the pure EV nature of their vehicles, whether it's the level of fan base that they've built up and the brand equity that's in their name, the, the desirability of the demographic that they've got. I mean, they've got these young, tech-savvy, relatively wealthy people who are huge fans. It's, it's probably the most desirable demographic out there. Uh, it's really hard to apply traditional automotive numbers and try to come up with a valuation based on that. But, but Ralph's right. There's a lot of questions, whether it's the volume of, of sales he's got versus the traditional automakers, whether it's the debt that has now been incurred. Plenty of questions remain that, that you know, at some point do apply to everyone, even a, even a tech company versus a car company like Tesla. Now, we are still waiting for more consistency from Tesla in terms of vehicle profits. So why aren't we seeing that already? I think every time, you know, there's the p potential to kind of have an even out on, on production and, and sales and money, there's a big investment in something else. You know, I think Elon, for better or for worse, seems to have learned that you don't really need a profit to, uh, to maintain your stock value. So he always has bigger uh, aspirations, whether it's creating a truck or opening new, uh, new factories around the planet. You know, he's, he's, he's in growth mode. He's been in growth mode for 15 years, and uh, most startups, they get past that, and they move on to a stable financial situation. He's doing it after 15 years, and why not? Look where the stock is. There's, he's not really being punished for it, is he? So what about the other car makers, then? They're, they're seeing Tesla's continued rise. How are they reshaping their efforts to stay competitive? They're definitely changing. I mean, that's one thing you cannot deny. You cannot deny that Tesla and Elon Musk have changed the auto industry. They look at what's going on there. They look at the kind of brand equity and demographic appeal that he's got, and they want part of that too. And whether it's, you know, new startups like Rivian or whether it's existing companies uh, like Volkswagen and Ford and General Motors going much heavier into the EV commitment, they all know that they've got at least be in this market. They've got to play a role and play a part in the EV world. They cannot ignore it any longer. And I think we wouldn't be nearly this far along globally and across all these manufacturers if Tesla didn't exist. There's no question. And just quickly, we know that Musk's compensation structure is a complicated one. Twelve different tranches of stock options being released at varying stages of progress. What's the thinking behind this strategy? You know, I think Elon is, is seen as so critical to the company. It's really... Elon Musk is Tesla, 
And I think that he needs to feel like he's being properly compensated because he really is the reason that the company is what it is, and it's got the fan base it's got. So I, I think he was able to negotiate fairly aggressive and complex and convoluted, but ultimately beneficial to him stock system because he is the man behind the brand more than anyone else by, by a long shot. There's really no one else besides him that makes the brand what it is. Indeed. Thank you so much. Carl Brower, the executive publisher at Cox Automotive.